Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. I'm here with Steve Sinclair of Mojo. You guys make, or you guys are developing a really interesting product. It's a contact lens that's also a AR display. That's right, we're building Mojo Lens, which is, we believe, the world's first augmented reality smart contact lens. I mean, this is kind of the dream, right? Not a pair of glasses that I wear, but something that's in the contact lens form factor, but being able to get all the hardware, yeah. power, radios, everything in. Uh, and you guys have a working prototype. We do, yeah. Everyone has heard about smart contact lenses. You've seen it in the movies, you read about it in science fiction. And we decided about seven years ago, we were gonna build it. And so we've been working on it uh, all this time. We have built a number of prototypes over the years, but we just announced that we worn the very first prototype that included all the features and componentry that we think we need for our first product. And it all worked. Well, in terms of getting all the hardware you need into the limitations of a form factor. I'm sure yeah. that's kind of the guiding principle. It needs to be something you can wear, be comfortable, mm -hmm. be safe uh, over and, and be useful, have mm -hmm. a, a miniaturization in displays and radios as help. But tell me what's inside the current prototype. What's, sure. what's the current feature set that's available? Well, uh, grab this. You can put this in your hand if you'd like to. And, and this, take is a look. this is it. This, this is, is a prototype. Yeah, one this is a prototype. Prototypes. This one isn't uh, functional in your hand, but um, it does have all the pieces and componentry necessary to, to be a real, uh, real smart contact lens. Um, we call this our feature complete lens, as I said, because it has all the elements needed to, to function and deliver AR to your eyes. The heart of the lens is the world's smallest and densest micro LED display. That's we the had, thing in the center. That's the thing in the center. We had to invent that ourselves. So it's a half a millimeter across with a density of 14,000 pixels per inch. Okay. which is by far the densest display you're ever going to find. I can and do the math, but how many actual pixels are we talking about? Well, talking in about a half a millimeter, you're talking about about 280 or so across diameter wise, which when it's that close to your eye is plenty to see graphics and text yeah. and yeah. be able to see any content that you want to see. So the display is, is obviously a key part of an augmented reality experience, um, but you also have to build in the other pieces. You have to have a wireless radio. We have a five gigahertz radio built into it with a proprietary Mojo developed protocol that streams the content onto the lens and also pulls uh, sensor data off the lens. And mm. speaking of sensors, we've built in eye tracking sensors. So the same, the same componentry that you have in your phone to understand its orientation, and like IMU. The, the, <laughs> the IMU, the gyro, the accelerometer, the magnetometer, those are built into the lens so that we can hold imagery stable based on how your eyes are moving. I mean, I, I think of you know VR headsets and AR headsets that you wear as eyewear of using some off-the-shelf components because yeah. they can fit in the form factor, like what you'd have in a phone. This all kind of has to be custom. Yeah, we've we've built the display ourselves. We built the radio ourselves. That's a custom ASIC that we have. There's a power management integrated circuit mm -hmm. um, that talks to the and controls the batteries that we have built into it, and those are built to, to our specifications as well. Uh, the IMU is built to our specification. Oh, it is. Of anything, that's probably the one off the shelf that we were able to just make small modifications to to fit in there. Right. Um, but all of that together into a complete integrated system so that we can stream the content onto your eyes so that you can have eyes up, hands free information wherever you want it. Yeah, I look at some of the very early prototypes where we're just yeah. proving that you can have a display be right over your fovea, kind of that. So you're doing basically built in foveated rendering because you're right. tracking the eye, you're only rendering that circle that That's right. your eye's gonna be looking at. Uh, everything around here is a combination of radios and and battery, and that's all like this custom PCB? That's right, that's right. We take a uh, we take a PCB, it's kind of flattened out, and we, yeah. and we populate all or the chips on it, it, it <laughs> and we have a picture in our B-roll that you'll be able to see where we fold it into that conical shape, yeah. and then we embed it inside what's called a scleral lens, which is a medical grade contact lens that's been around for decades. Wow. Um, and it allows us to embed it all uh, and mold it into it. And then we cut the inside of the lens, the inside that goes against your eye, to the shape of your eye so that it fits perfectly on your eye, locks into place like a puzzle piece essentially, so that the display is oriented correctly. Um, and at that point, we're able to project the information, as you said, right over the fovea. It's always there. Think of it like a spotlight, a spotlight that follows your eyes wherever they move. And so it's about 15 degrees, but you can't look at the edges directly because it moves with your eyes. So we, we, we like to say it's an unlimited field of view because no matter where you look, there's always going to be content if we want to show you content through the system. If I want to look to the edge, the peripheral, 
it's going to shift that spotlight, that 15 degree circle that's right. over to the edge. That's right. And that's how you activate icons, menus, content. That's right. All and sorts of and media. you bring up a really good point is that the eye tracking is so good because it's on the eye. It's so precise that we believe that it's the first device that really can do true eye controlled user interface. And so you use your eyes to control it. You don't have to use your hands with gestures. Mm -hmm. You don't have to talk to it. Those are all possible things to do. And they're situations where you might want to do that. But we really want it to be invisible. We want it to be something that is completely hands-free, eyes up. You stay focused on someone. Yet if I need to get information, I can get it very quickly without having to fiddle with anything or do anything extra with, with my hands. Yeah, I was trying your uh, pass-through yeah. AR example of it, and I had to kind of fight against my natural tendency to want to use <laughs> head track controls right. as I'm familiar with in VR and I could keep my head still or move my head and still use my eye to select icons. I'm sure you're doing a lot of testing as to That's right. what the duration is like because your pupil is constantly moving, yes. right? So what does a hold to you know to click feel like when you're it's about staring to to click? That's right. And and that demo that you did, we built, you know, a number of years ago to prove out the concept of eye control, and then we built it actually into the lens. And yeah. so we're at that point where we can actually validate that it really does work, um, and it really is a, a valid way and a great way to control something. The category that we're trying to build, we call it invisible computing, this idea that I can get the right information at the right time, when I want it, contextually, and then it just goes away, and I'm back to being myself. Mm. I look like myself because it's a contact lens. Um, that always on availability but off most of the time, so I'm engaged in the real world. Now, obviously, you're choosing how much hardware to put on board, how mm -hmm. much to have off board with yes. the radio. That's right. right? That's this balance of a form factor of your kind of design envelope here. That's Compute right. is not happening in terms of the, the processing of the image. Is that happening over like there's a, a... There's a little bit of that. We do have a, a an ARM M0 processor okay. on the lens. Wow, okay. Um, we could beef that up over time if we wanted to. It's all about power yep. and performance trade-offs. Most of the compute does happen on a, another device. We call it a relay accessory. It's like mm. a neck band that you wear around your neck. Oh. It has a wireless radio with that five gigahertz connection. So it yeah. can talk to your eyes, um, talk to the lens. Um, it's got a CPU and a GPU and, and memory. And it's got radio so it can talk to your phone or it can talk to the to the network and, and yeah. to Wi-Fi if you want it to. Really makes sense because you're then fixing and pre-calibrating how much radio power you need That's right. to communicate between device. So it's not like going to a cell phone tower, it's not going to your phone, not going to your laptop. It's gotta go this far. That's all it needs to do. <laughs> and hopefully we can get it to go farther over time. But yeah. for first product, we're really happy with where we're ending up and its ability to do that. Well, that lets you then precisely determine how much power you want to put in the radio, how much you can, yeah. the broadcast strength of that, which leads to, I'm sure, everyone's question is, you know, about safety and like, it's mm -hmm. a battery on your eye. You talked about <laughs> using existing contact lens style materials. That's you right. Know, what's, what's been the testing like and how can people be assured that this is just fine to use? Yeah, so first of all, it is a scleral contact lens, which is a medical grade contact lens that's been used for decades. It's used for people and prescribed for people that have irregularly shaped corneas or severe dry eye. Um, and so it's out in the world, half a million people in the US wear these types of lenses every day. It's the perfect platform to embed in electronics inside of it. Mm -hmm. um, and they are safely embedded inside of it. And that's a lot of the testing that we do is to prove that everything that's inside the lens um, is, is not getting out. It's sandwiched. It's sandwiched inside the lens, um, that it's not leaching out, that the materials that are touching your eye are approved and understood by material scientists and the FDA that these are things that people wear and, and, and have access to. And we have we have experience with those things on their eye. Mm -hmm. And of course, it is a medical device. So we go through all the rigor that you would expect a medical device company to go through to eventually get certification from the FDA. They yeah. get to make the final decision on that. And sure. if whether we've you know, proven our case that, that it is safe to wear, but we understand where the bar is and we know what we have to do in order to, to hit that. It's funny because with it using you know, basically the form factor of a contact lens, contact lenses are designed to affect the light coming in for focusing. That's right. And you're taking piggybacking on that to focus this display as well, right? So the display itself is focused to your eyes. So it's what, like a, a mirror. It is. We, we've actually, you. we've invented our own custom optic that sits over the display, oh. um, which is separate. You can't see it because it's smaller than the display, um, but it's built in there. And of course, the contact lens is a contact lens. It corrects vision for the real yeah. world as well. Yeah, so you have a con you have correction for the real world, 
and correction or optimization for the that, display. That's right. Because the distance from the front of your, your cornea to yeah. you know, the back of your eye is going to be yeah. that. I mean, we, we really distance. believe in the idea that you are going to put this on in the morning. You're going to wear it all day long like a normal contact lens. You're going to access information that's useful to you throughout the day. Um, and the rest of the time it's off. And at the end of the day, you take it off, you put it in its cleaner charger, and it's ready for you the next day. Wow. In terms of the use case that you're going for right now and the amount of use time and the mm -hmm. battery capacity you want to put in, what is the target for that? Well, we do want to try and hit an all-day wearability, but of course that's uh, with the assumption that you're not going to have the display on, full mm. brightness, always active for, for eight hours or whatever it happens to be. Our mm -hmm. goal is about two hours of continuous use, but chunked up and spread out throughout the day to get those little snippets of information that matter to you in, in the moment. Um, some of the early use cases that we're looking at um, are really focused on sports and athletics and performance where you want to have eyes up information when you're running or skiing or cycling. Your hands are busy. You need to be aware of your surroundings from a safety perspective um, and you want to make sure that um, that information is not distracting and you can look at it quickly and it doesn't break your flow to say look at another screen on your wrist or on your shoulder or yeah. in your pocket. Um, it and you're also adjusting because the micro LED, the refresh rate, the brightness, so you can kind of pull levers there. Yeah, and that's what we're doing over this next year or so is that we've built this prototype and it works, but it's not optimized yet. There's a lot of things we need to learn about, um, about some of those trade-offs from a power and performance perspective. And so we'll be making tweaks to all the elements of the system, to the UI, building out software and, and, and building out the, the platform aspects of what we want to do. Um, and then once we've done that, then we can take that finished product um, to the FDA. And you're looking down the line and projecting roadmaps for manufacturer processes, battery yeah. technologies to feel like you can either right. reduce the footprint uh, or increase functionality. That's right. Wow. Uh, what are the kind of next steps and form factors? This kind of this is. This is uh, the target? And what well, we don't call this product. We do call it a prototype. It needs to get thinner. Um, certainly, there's more things we can do to push the, the electronics a little further to the edges. There's fit, fit and comfort uh, mm -hmm. work that we have to continue to do to, to, to make it thinner and, and, and fit better on your eye. Um, so there's also a cosmetic uh, treatment that we want to use to, to basically hide the electronics. So with an artificial iris or artificial mm. sclera. Right, right. Um, so that it looks more normal when you're wearing it. Yes, yes. Um, right. Some people are going to like it without that, and that's great. <laughs> um, but some people are going to want to look like themselves. And so um, putting, putting on some cosmetic treatments, like a colored contact lens that yes, you'd, you'd right. see in the movies or um, that you see some people wearing is, is totally possible with this platform. And I guess, what about stereo? What about having both <laughs> eyes? Well, What's absolutely. You want to have, have them in both eyes. You want to have both image in this eye and this eye. And we know how your eyes are moving, so we understand virgence. Yeah. And so we can do 3D depth, like yeah. stereoscopic vision based on this. Wow. Overlapping those 15 degree circles. Yeah. That Venn diagram of depth. That's um, right. And, and it all connected to this, this, you know, this relay that you'd be wearing. That's right. That is so cool. Thank you so much. This is fascinating technology, and I can't believe with the demos you've had here, that be able to actually look through a, a smart contact lens. Oh, great. Well, thank you for talking to us.